Hello and welcome. In this video, we will explain how you can create a confidence interval in Excel. A confidence interval is a range of values that contains our population parameter or true value of a random variable with a certain probability, most often 95%. On this sheet, we have 5000 observations of the height of students at the local university. We are interested to compute the range in which 95% of the students fall. To do this, we have two options. The first is by making use of the analysis tool pack, and the second one is by using the Excel confidence function. First, we show how to use the confidence function. For this function, we need several inputs among which alpha or the confidence level, the size of your sample, and the sample standard deviation. The confidence level is the level of accuracy of the confidence interval. In our case, this is 95% or 0.95. The other inputs for the function, the standard deviation and sample size are already computed on the sheet by using the count function for the size and the stdef.s function for the standard deviation. Note that we have used the stdef.s rather than the stdef.p function because we compute the standard deviation of a sample. We are ready to compute the confidence interval now. To do this we type confidence. As you can see, you can choose between confidence.norm and confidence.t. When you work with a small sample size, the normal distribution tends to underestimate the confidence interval. So in that case, we go for the confidence.t function, which uses the t distribution that has fatter tails than the normal distribution. Note that the central limit theorem implies that the sample means of large numbers of observations tend to be distributed normally, whatever the underlying distribution. So when we work with many observations, the confidence interval can be determined using the confidence.norm function. In many cases, a sample size of 400 is large enough so that the normal approximation is quite accurate, but the accuracy does depend on the underlying distribution. For very skewed distributions, an appropriate transformation of the data may be required. We are working with a large sample, 5000 observations, and you can see from the histogram on the screen that the underlying distribution approximates a normal distribution. So here we can use the confidence.norm function without any doubts. We select this function and enter the required parameters. First we need to insert alpha. This is the 1 minus the confidence level, so we type 1 minus F3. Next, we need the standard deviation, which is computed in cell F4. And finally, we should insert the sample size into the function. This can be found in cell F5. Now we enter and see a figure appear on the screen. To find the confidence interval, you take the mean and do plus and minus the confidence figure. We type equals mean in cell F6 minus the confidence figure in F8 to compute the lower bound of the confidence interval. For the upper bound of the confidence interval, we type F6, the mean, plus F8, the confidence figure. There is a second way to find the confidence figure. This can be done by navigating to Data, go into the Analysis tab, and select Data Analysis. If this is not on your screen, you go to File, Options, Add-ins, select Go next to Manage Excel Add-ins, Check the analysis tool pack and press OK. When you click on data analysis, a menu opens where you select descriptive statistics and press OK. The descriptive statistics menu opens where you first need to insert the input range. This is the height variable located in column C. We did not select the variable's name as part of the input range, so we don't have to check the labels in first row box. Next, we choose the location for the output of the descriptive data. Here we choose cell E14. Finally, we choose the required confidence level for the confidence interval, which is 95% in our case. The nice feature of using this method is that you can also select some other descriptive statistics as part of the output. In our case, we also want the summary statistics, so we check this box as well. We press OK and see the output appear on the screen. Here you see the confidence figure and the mean, so you can compute the confidence interval bounds in the same way as before. 
We take the mean and do plus and minus the confidence level to find the confidence interval. This concludes our tutorial on the confidence interval in Excel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel or software related tutorials. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.